and uh, welcome to my talk about lazy loading and improving the performance of an Angular application. As mentioned, I am Manfred, I am a trainer and consultant and I am focusing on Angular. And uh, from time to time I am writing, my last book is the book with the ugliest cover animal and uh, currently we are rewriting it because uh, there is this new Angular, you know, but rewriting means to taking the book as it is, to throw it away and to write a whole new book because, you know, everything changed with Angular. I'm also part of the Google Developer Experts team and I'm very proud of this. So, what is this talk about? What are the contents of this talk? First of all, I want to introduce lazy loading. I want to show you how to leverage lazy loading to improve the startup performance of your application. And then I will talk about preloading. And in addition to that, I also want to talk about some issues that arises when you are using lazy loading together with shared models. But first things first, let's start with lazy loading. So you need to know when I've prepared this talk, a good friend of mine told me that I'm very authentic when I'm talking about lazy things. I'm not sure what he meant, but I think it was some kind of compliment. Anyway, uh, what we are seeing here is a typical model structure of an Angular application. We have this root model that is called app model most of the times. We have several feature models and we have one shared model here. And normally, all those models are loaded when the application is started. And of course, this influences our startup time in a bad way. And this is exactly where lazy loading comes into play. When we are going with lazy loading, we just have to load the app model at first. And then we can load additional models on demand. For instance, the first feature model, the second feature model, or the third feature model. So what does it take to go with lazy loading? It turns out that using lazy loading is very, very easy. You just need such a special route that uses load children and load children has to point to the model in question. So as you're seeing here, load children is using a string. It is pointing to a string. It isn't allowed to point to a type because when you would point to a type here, this would cause a bundling solution like Webpack to take the whole model and to put the model into your main bundle. And this, of course, would avoid lazy loading when everything is uh, within the main bundle. So we have a string here and the string contains the name of your model file and in addition to this, this string also contains the name of your model class. You have to use a separating character for those. You have to use the hash sign. The hash sign separates the file name from the name of the model class. In addition to that, a lazily loaded model can have routes of its own. And uh, this is what so such routes look like. There are uh, some ordinary routes, routes where a path is pointing to some component. But now the question arises, which path is pointing to such a route? And the answer is, this is the uh, path that is pointing to it. You need a combined path, a path that uh, consists of the path that is triggering the lazy loading and the path that is mentioned within the routing configuration for the lazily loaded model. So when you are remembering the slide before, there was a path uh, that was called flights and this path used load children. Those path has been triggering the lazy loading process and here we have this uh, path bookings within our uh, lazy loaded model. So in addition to that, you also need a webpack configuration that takes care of splitting up your bundle. And for this, you could use the Angular router loader. Of course, you can also use tools that are provided by the CLI. The CLI comes out of the box with such loader that uh, they can care about splitting up the bundle into several chunks. Yeah, as mentioned, those loaders gives you several chunks that can be lazy loaded on demand. 
So I think enough for theory. Let's start with a live demonstration. I've prepared a simple application and uh, this simple application is about booking flights. This is my demonstration application I'm using to show several aspects of Angular. And here we have something I'm calling login for very honest people. We just have to press login and then we are signed in into the application. So I've done some research and I have found out that everything is more smooth in this world when everyone is honest. In addition to that, I can navigate to book a flight and there I can search for flights. And in addition to that, I can also search for a passenger. And here, the name of my current user is proposed. When I'm logged in, then the username is proposed. When I'm logged out, then no username is proposed. So please keep this in mind. We will need this a bit later. Currently, the whole application ends up in one bundle. And this is what I want to change now. And for this reason, I'm switching into my application. And here I will introduce a route that is triggering lazy loading. So this route gets a path of its own. The path is called flight booking. And here I'm, I'm using something like low children and load children is pointing to my uh, model I want to lazy load. The model is located within flight booking slash flight booking dot model. This is the file with the model. Then I have to append this hash and then I have to append the name of my model class. It is flight booking model, I suppose. Okay, so this is the first step to about getting lazy loading. The first step is to remove the reference to this module from my app model. Because when I'm referencing this module, a bundling solution like Webpack would just follow this reference and it would then, as mentioned, put the whole module into my main bundle because this is, you know, what Webpack does and in this case I want to avoid this situation. In addition to that, I, also, I have also to alter the roots within my lazy loaded model. Here we go. No, this is the wrong file. Let me just open the right file here. Flight booking, flight booking routes. Yeah, here I have the bar flight booking. And I will alter this to have an empty bath. So this is the bath that gets route that's do. This is the uh, route that gets activated when the model is lo loaded in a lazy manner. Okay, awesome. So if everything works, then I get a new bundle split off. And as you see here during the output of Webpack, it is the case. I just got a bundle that is called DoJS. DoJS contains my flight booking model. Awesome. So let's switch back to my application and let's go into my F12 tools, into my developer tools, and let's reload the application during uh, having the network tab open. And here we see that everything is loaded, everything but my DoJS. The DoJS is skipped so far, but when I'm navigating to book a flight, then we see uh, the DoJS is loaded on demand. It is lazily loaded just on demand when we need it. So I think that proves that lazy loading takes happen here. Lazy loading comes also with a drawback. The drawback is that the application needs some seconds to lazily load the model on demand. That's why we have a slightly delay when we are uh, clicking on book a flight. It is very a tiny delay, perhaps you've seen it. The delay takes about one or two seconds. It takes one or two seconds to load this model on demand. And to avoid this delay, the Angular team gives us something like preloading. Preloading is addressing this very issue. 
So what is the idea behind preloading? The idea behind preloading is that models that might be needed later are loaded after the start of the application, after the user sees the first route. And so this model is available immediately when the user needs it, when the user navigates to it. What do we need to get started with preloading? We just need to register a preloading strategy. The preloading strategy I'm using here is a baked-in preloading strategy. Angular 2 comes with this preloading strategy. It is called preload all models. And uh, I think you can imagine what it does. It just preloads all the models that can be preloaded by uh, this mechanism here. So let's have a look at this. For this, I'm switching to my uh, development environment. And I'm going to my app routes file. And here I'm setting up the routes. I'm passing the routes to root of for root. And uh, this uh, creates this configured uh, app router model. And here I'm just passing in an options object. And this options object gets a preloading strategy. And as mentioned, here I'm using the preloading strategy with the name preload all models. OK, so let's give Webpack some time to rebundle all this stuff. The bundle is invalid, and hopefully it gets valid eventually. Yeah, that looks good. So let's switch back into my application. Let's have a look into my network tab here. And let's reload the application. And as we can see, first the application is loaded. And later, the bundle to JS is loaded. So hopefully, that gives us enough time to display the first route to the user. And during the user decides whether to click here or there, the do.js is loaded by the means of preloading. Of course, this is not a proof that preloading takes happen. Uh, perhaps uh, Angular is just loading all the models at once before the user is seeing the first view. And to prove that uh, preloading takes happen here, I have prepared a custom preloading strategy. Let's have a look to this custom preloading strategy. A custom preloading strategy is just a class that is implementing the base type preloading strategy. And this base type comes with this preload function. And preload gets two things passed. First of all, it gets the root in question passed. The root, the router could, lo could load by the means of preloading. And then the function also gets this function here passed. It is a function that kicks in the preloading procedure. Within this method, we can decide whether to preload this uh, route here, this route in question, or not. And when we decide to go with preloading, we just have to call this function here. And to demonstrate the fact that preloading takes happen, I'm just using some kind of RxJS magic. I, I'm using an observable with a Boolean. A true value goes on its journey, and this true value is delayed for seven seconds. Don't know why, perhaps because of bad traffic conditions. And after that, I'm using this flat map here. And this flat map is just calling my preloading function. So here we have just a delay for about uh, seven seconds before preloading kicks in. So let's take the name of this preloading strategy. Let's switch to my app routes file. And here I'm setting up this very custom preloading strategy. OK, so let's give Webpack some time to rebundle all those things. Yeah, I think it looks good. Webpack rebundled all this. And here we see everything is loaded, but not my do.js file. But hopefully, after about seven seconds, I think you've seen it, the do.js comes in. So let's retry this. 
everything is loaded and in about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, yeah, <laughs> seconds, my DoJS file gets loaded into the browser. I think this proves that there is indeed something like preloading and that preloading combines the best of the two worlds. It combines the good startup performance with the fact that everything is available immediately when we click on a menu item. Of course, you can also write meaningful preloading strategies and this is what I'm going to do now. I have also prepared a meaningful preloading strategy. A preloading strategy that is asking the routing configuration whether the uh, architect of the application wants this very route to get preloaded. And for this, I'm accessing the data object. Perhaps you know it. You can put to every route a data object. You can configure every route with a custom data object. And you can put every property you can imagine into this data object. Here I'm going with a data object that has a preload property. And when this preload property is truthy, then I'm... Uh, calling this preloading function. Otherwise, I'm just returning a dummy observable. Okay, to test this, I have to uh, enhance my uh, routing configuration with a data object and a preload uh, property. And for this, I'm switching back to my app routes. Here I have my route that is kicking in preloading. And here I'm using my data object. And I'm setting preload to true, which is the truthiest value, if you ask me. And if this all is true, then my model should get preloaded on startup. So, of course, Webpack needs uh, one or two seconds, perhaps also 10 or 12 seconds. And as we are seeing here, the 2.js is preloaded. Let's give it another try. Duff goes down. Let's cross fingers. Where is my DoJS? Who has seen my DoJS? No, come on. No DoJS. Where did it go? I'm shocked. I have here my data attribute. I have preload. When I'm switching back to my custom preloading strategy, I'm checking whether preload is truthy. And of course, it should be truthy in this case. Everything is bundled up. Let's reload, let's clear the cache. Perhaps I'm just a caching victim. No. No DoJS, what a bummer. So what happens here? Let's use the debugger for this. Preload strategy, custom preload strategy. Let's put a breakpoint in here. Let's reload it. Crossing fingers, you know. Yeah, here I have data, and my data attribute is empty. Bah. It was in the wrong route, really. Okay, so let's have a look to it. Flight booking, preload, I think the route is the correct one. Yeah. So I should have a preload property within my data object. Maybe you should give it from activated source instead of Yeah, so this should work. I have uh, tested it before and there is this data attribute. Ay ay ay. Route.data route.data.preload nothing okay button i'm in the home route now okay 
Yeah, perhaps. One more try. We are in here. Step. Uh, doesn't look good. So I think we just have to imagine this. Uh, I think this is just a slight error I have made. I have done this sample thousand times before, so uh, for some reason I'm running out of luck here. It is uh, a, tra a tragedy, believe me. Okay, so let's go on. Uh, we have seen in general preloading works. And I think we should go on with the next topic now. Let's talk about an issue. Let's talk about an issue you can run into quite easily when it comes to shared models and lazy loading. And to demonstrate this issue, I just want to show you this issue live and in color. So for this, I'm switching back to my application. And I'm logging in. I'm switching to my lazy loaded model. I'm switching to search passenger. And as you see, we are seeing nothing. Nada, niente, nulla. Uh, before, there was the name of the current user proposed for searching the passenger. And somehow, we have broke this. So somehow, introducing lazy loading uh, broke this point of the application. And now the question arises, how did we, what did we do wrong? And here is the answer. Currently, I have my app module. And in addition to this, I have a flight module. And both models are including the shared module. And the shared module comes with the off service. The off service is the part of my application who remembers the current user's name. And as it turns out, when you go with lazy loading, then your lazily loaded module gets an own injector. And because of this, it gets its own dependency injection scope. And because of this, in turn, it gets its own services. It gets its own global off service. And so we have two off services in play here. The first off service out here is just used by my off model, uh, by my app model. And this is the off service that gets the name of the current user. And the second off service is used by the flight module just to do this proposal, to uh, create this proposal for the name of the current user. And of course, the second off service doesn't know anything about the first off service. The good point of this is that when something can't be, find, can't be found within uh, a scope, within a dependency injection scope, then this very service is looked up within the scope above. In this case, this would be the global scope. So everything we need to accomplish here is to get rid of this off service within this second scope. And to do so, we could introduce a core module. The documentation of Angular proposes this core module uh, that gets all the global services. And this core module uh, can only be imported into the app module. It is only allowed by convention to import this core model into the app model. By doing this, we have our global services just within the global dependency injection scope. And so there is just one instance of this singleton. So this is one solution to this uh, issue. Let's try to use this solution. I'm going into my example here. And here I'm creating a new model, a new model that is called core model. This is a new dev script file, core.model.ts. And as you know, a model is just a class, core model. And this class is decorated with ng model. So let's import ng model. 
come on. Come on, WebStorm, import this for me. Alt and Enter, import statement, yeah, here we go. So, and uh, of course, such a model can have all of those uh, traditional properties like imports and uh, like declarations and so on. And here I'm just going with providers. I'm just going with a provider for my auth service. For this, I have to import the auth service. And in addition to that, to be on the safe side, let's just import uh, the common module. Common module. So it is very common to import the common module. Imports, what did I wrong here? ng model imports. Yeah, I think that should that should work. I think WebStorm is having a problem here. Yeah. So let's go with this core model. I'm switching to my app model, and here I am importing the core model. Yeah. Cool. And then, of course, we have to get rid of our auth service within our uh, shared module. For this, I'm switching to the shared module. And here I'm taking it out. So there should be the auth service somewhere. Oh, yeah. Now I've seen the mistake I've done. This would be the right code for the core model. Okay, what have we done now? We have uh, removed our off service from the shared model. We have put the off service into the core model, and the core model is only imported by our app model. So now we should have one and only one global off service. So let's see whether this works. Let's reload our application. Let's log in into our application. Let's switch to Book of Light. Let's cross fingers. Let's go to Search Messenger. And yeah, we have repaired this solution again. Thank you. So when we are using this approach that is described by the documentation of Angular, we very, very end up, we very, very easily end up with a very huge core module, a core module that contains all these global services. And that's why I like to go with another solution. That's why I like to go with shared models that are uh, capable of be used together with lazy loading. And that's what I'm presenting here at the end of my presentation. Here I have an auth model. This auth model, of course, contains my auth service. And this auth model comes in two versions. It comes with services. This is the first version. And it comes without services. This is the second version. And now I'm allowed to import the auth model that comes with services only into my app model. And I'm allowed to use the version that comes without services to import only into other models. And so I'm ending up with one and only one global auth service. So what does it take to go with this solution? We just need one class. We just need one model class. And this model class doesn't get any providers. So this is the version without services. And then, in addition to that, we are creating a static for root function. And this for root function is returning a module with providers object. And module with providers is just a structure, a structure that takes a pre-existing model and that adds some providers to it. 
And so we have to use this version that we are getting from for root together with our main module, together with our root module. So I think for the uh, sake of the timing, I will skip this demonstration. But I think we all can imagine that we can use this for root version with the main module, the for root version that contains the uh, service, and uh, the other version that doesn't contain any service with all the other models. So let me sum up everything. What did we see in this uh, talk? We have seen that leveraging lazy loading is quite easy, and we have seen that leveraging lazy loading can improve the startup performance of your application. We have also seen that Webpack splits up our chunks uh, so that we have several chunks that can be loaded by means of lazy loading. In addition to that, we haven't seen, because uh, there wasn't time, that there is a way to prevent lazy loading. And we have seen that there is something like a preloading strategy, a preloading strategy that allows us to preload everything after the start of the application so that everything is available immediately when we need it. We have also seen that there is this core module we can use for global services. And at the end of the presentation, I have shown you this nifty trick, this nifty design pattern that involves the for root function that we can use to avoid this pitfall that arises when we are using shared models together with lazy loading. So thank you for coming and have a nice day. Thank you.